Hi folks, this is Jay. We're revisiting Shirley's Garden in Clarence, New York. Shirley's Garden uh, is part of the Open Gardens Western New York, which I did a video back in July. But there are so many difference now, so we find Shirley again. Can you say a quick hi? Hello, 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 yeah. Jay. Thanks for coming back. Oh, it's my pleasure, because I have a soft spot for the fragrant pan, and I know you have a huge collection here. So that's why I thought, yeah, let's do another video and showcase all the wonderful uh, fragrant plant you have here. So, sure. um, I received one of the uh, wonderful uh, night blooming jasmine from you. So this is not the mother plant, but it's a baby plant you have, right? So yeah, this is a two-year plant. So uh, it's, sec it's its second year. So mm. I propagate um, and I gave you what I would call a year one plant. Yeah. This is a year two plant. And then by the third year, they're so large, I generally let them go. They have to be brought in. They're a tropical, so it's not yeah. like you can keep them outside. Yeah. So we're in zone six here, well, USDA yeah. Conus zone, zone six. So uh, they're not cold hardy here. It's something we need to bring inside. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. really, um, there are plants I have. In fact, if you want to see another fragrant plant that I have, which is the, the passion flower, mm -hmm. Uh, the Passiflora, that is also considered not hardy for zone six, but you end up with these crazy microclimates like I mm -hmm. have here, yeah. and it comes back. And in fact, I'm probably uh -huh. gonna have to dig some of it out. It is getting pretty invasive yeah. in this little uh -huh. bed yeah. next to my house. It likes and the, the heat. It's very fragrant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can get the fragrance from the passion flower and the bees, the pollinator just, uh, they just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they crawl in and they, they like hunker down. Um, yeah. the, the, you know, the uh, Japanese beetles really like them as well, and that's a problem. I do uh -huh. have to really be very, very uh -huh. um, attentive because uh -huh. they will eat the buds. This time of year, I mean, it's really going nuts. It's very, very happy. It likes this heat, but it also uh -huh. um, just seems to be doing better uh -huh. even without the stress um, of the Japanese beetles. Exactly. So, yeah, and I do have along with my... Um, fragrant flowers. I do have a lot of night bloomers as well. So I have the night oh, blooming yeah. uh -huh. jasmine. Uh -huh. But then I also have this, which I'm waiting for. Um, what is this? This is a night blooming cirrus, C E R E U S, I think. I am not uh -huh. the best speller. Mm -hmm. And I got a piece of this from a friend, which is a lot of my, my collection mm -hmm. are, um, as you call me, the plant pusher. Yeah, I'm from also a fellow plant pusher. <laughs> a fellow plant pusher. Uh -huh. um, I'm not above asking if somebody has uh -huh. something interesting. And this is now a few years old. And I think at the last count, I think I had 12 or 14 buds. I think tomorrow is going to be the day or, and maybe oh, even the wow. next day. Yeah. And they have a beautiful, beautiful scent. It's sort of citrusy and clean. Oh, okay. um, and it's actually not unlike this is an angel trumpet, another fragrant uh -huh. and another night bloomer. I have one bud left from a few days ago, but we're getting ready for another cycle. Let me show the, viewer, the, yeah. the flower of the trumpet vine. It's a very large flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's quite dramatic. So, so the, all those will be need to be brought inside. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. and this was also propagated. Uh, somebody, I think, from the Open Garden Facebook group just gave me a, a bunch of sticks. Oh. And okay. I propagated. And I'm actually getting ready. I am going to propagate uh -huh. from some. I found actually when propagating, and this is something that people might find interesting, that. Um, these the sort of these new growths that come from the bottom like here where you see this tender green uh -huh. mm -hmm. they propagate very successfully also with the night blooming jasmine oh, okay. that i find uh -huh. that those shoots that come out uh -huh. they they propagate quite easily and uh -huh. are very very hardy so i, I am yeah. gonna uh -huh. before i take this in i'm gonna definitely try and propagate some of yeah. these so uh let me show the viewer again with the bud from this plant so 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 is this a type of succulent not really um i'm not really mm. sure I, um I'm not the world's best researcher. I am a trial by error gardener in many cases. Um, I know that they get quite large uh -huh. in the desert. As I said, I have to bring this in. This is uh -huh. another, uh -huh. um, it is definitely not cold hardy. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at the bud and the, the, when they bloom, they have this large white flower. White flower, it's almost, I've had the ones um, two years ago, they were eight or nine inches across. I measured wow. them. They're really, really spectacular. Uh -huh. um, this is sort of a flat leafed, yeah. Cactus, but I've seen them on true cacti, like the ones you would see in the desert that are sort of rounder and fatter. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's clearly its own. I mean, I need to do a better job of identifying my plants. So, uh, 
Uh, are they also called the Queen of the Night? Queen of the Night, yep. Yeah. Oh, the hummingbird is here. Yeah, oh, they oh, flew they, away. <laughs> I definitely plant my garden um, uh -huh. to attract the hummingbirds. As uh -huh. we've talked, we do sit out here. Yeah, just one quick note for sure. this one. So the Queen of the Night, each flower only bloom for only one, one night. night. Yeah. yeah, but it's particularly fragrant. It's, I mean, it's almost magical. It's a magical moment. It when really, they, really they, is. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it's hard to believe that they're real. And mm -hmm. I think in this era of you know, AI and mm -hmm. digital technology to watch yeah. something in real time uh -huh. in your home, right uh -huh. before your eyes. Uh -huh. It, I mean, th that's the kind of magic to me that, yeah. you know, that it, a screen can't rep uh -huh. re and then to smell it. Exactly. Uh, all of that is happening. It's so sensory and wonderful. Yeah. So, so this is the mother plant of the night blooming jasmine. This is for this. Yes. And I, I mean, she's probably, yeah, let me show the viewer, the flower, they have this very, Mm -hmm. uh, dainty, small, lime green flower. It's, I mean, it's not particularly showy, but uh, we grow this for the fragrance. Oh, and this fragrance, uh, whereas the um, angel trumpet and the cirrus have like a, a clean, slightly uh -huh. citric, this is sticky, sticky, sweet and fantastic. Oh, okay. it's, <laughs> it is very much like a perfume. It yeah. is a, uh -huh. um, it is really a powerful, beautiful yeah. fragrant. And the fact that I have three of them uh -huh. blooming sort of at one time, oh. um, it's really quite I mean, actually have something quite special here. This is a type of annual savia, but mm -hmm. uh, it's white and it has this silvery uh, color to the to the bud too. It's very beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. I do plant um, as you know in color mm -hmm. themes to try and bring some cohesion to mm -hmm. my collection. Mm -hmm. um, as my beds have grown and my plants my varieties have grown. I try to bring some order to the variety. And so one of the things yeah. I do are color bunches. Like you can see here, um, my blue black salvia is paired with purple um, heliotrope, which is also oh, yeah. quite fragrant. Uh -huh. And then as well as some petunias and, and then um, verbena. the, the verbenas. Yeah. And I mean, this is really fun for me. I'll go to uh -huh. uh, one of my f favorite nurseries and I will go and sort of plant with in the uh, build sort of color families for specific pots. So I might right. go thinking about these couple pots and pull a bunch of things that I think will look nice together, come home and plant those and then go back. I really Wonderful. take my time. Yeah. And the hummingbirds love, love, love this. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that drew me to so many fragrant plants was uh, I was told that the deer generally won't eat fragrant oh, things. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a deer problem. Anyone that uh -huh. uh, knows me knows this because uh -huh. I often uh, rail against them. Um, but that's one of the reasons I went with the heliotrope is yeah. because the fragrance um, and also dark purple petunias very often are fragrant. Oh yeah, that's true. So the heliotrope, they have this powdery van mm -hmm. vanilla like scent. Mm -hmm. It's not particularly sweet, but uh, it's a very calming, soothing yep. scent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, people describe it similar to baby powder. <laughs> oh, I hadn't heard that, but it makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and well, then I, I do color. have, and, and I am going to... Oh, another uh, night blooming jasmine. Another night blooming jasmine. And then I do have to, uh, if Jay tells you some advice, you should listen. Uh. <laughs> I overwintered this mandevilla <laughs> and Jay said to me last year, oh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it because they don't bloom, even with lights. <laughs> And I don't, ha I have buds. I haven't had a flower yet. Jay, oh. you are 100% <laughs> correct. I yeah. won't waste my time next year. This mandevilla will go when it frosts. I, yeah. it, you were 100, 100% 100 well, correct. I mean, I have to say it's not all about the result. It's about the process. But I mean, it's a joy to see them setting buds. Yeah. I mean, as long as they bring you joy, it's yeah. worth it. Well, it was a lot of work for these five buds. I don't know. As I like to say, I'm not sure the juice was worth the squeeze. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's go this way. Sure. Oh, look, look at the hummingbirds. Yep. Yeah. They, oh. They're very, very um, engaged and they mm -hmm. get very territorial. They'll chase each other oh, off, yeah. uh -huh. off, the, uh, off the patio. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I have what was this summer's big project, which was putting in all of these pots. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's very striking visually. They, they, they just really pop out in front of the white Well, the white fence, fence. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then yeah. Um, this is what I call my little kitchen garden. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And it is really nice to have the herbs here by the window because we'll smell them. I used to put my basil in here, too, but it was just too hot. The basil would burn. Right. Yeah. So I actually have it in pots now. But um, yeah. so I have the lemon balm, the parsley, the thyme, uh -huh. lots of rosemary. I did just pull out 
I had an enormous oregano plant. And unless I was going to open my own pizzeria, I was yeah. never, ever, ever going to use yeah. all that they oregano. Get, they, they, kind of, they would get kind of uh, woody over time. Yep, yep. So it was just bananas. And I couldn't get to the tomatoes that were behind it, so I just pulled it out. Yeah. That's and actually a very good information for the viewer. So many of the herbs, the, the aromatic plant, they have the stronger arom the scent when they're young. Mm -hmm. So when they get older and get woody, they're not going to be as fragrant. No, and they're yeah. not as flavorful, right? Yeah, so, so I just got rid of the oregano, and then I really, my um, my parsley, which I think is a two or three year old, it bolted almost immediately. I'll probably just pull that out too right. and start again new yeah. next well, year. Look at the tall zinnia. So are they the state fair zinnia? You know, oh. I started a bunch from seed. Oh, from seed, yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, but clearly, and I don't know, and then I might have bought, you know, I'm not always as, I, as great at keeping records. Um, I'm, there's shorter ones down in the bottom. I think maybe I bought those or got them on sale. I can't remember. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're just beautiful. And oh, they would make you. wonderful cut flower because mm -hmm. they have this long stem. Yep. And uh, if you cut them often, they would uh, branch out, get you more flower mm -hmm. yeah, very fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I generally don't bring too many things in because I just mm -hmm. I want to be outside mm -hmm. as much as I can mm -hmm. in the summer. Um, I also, the nasturtiums are fragrant. Uh, oh, I think yeah. more so than people realize. Um, and one of the reasons I have so many of them, Let me again, show the to keep, people to keep the, the view deer. of the... Yeah, yeah, sure. The, 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 uh, this entire row, it's just magnificent. Yeah. And the, you reuse the container. Some of those yeah, are found yeah. by the curb. Many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, if it started when I wanted to get really big pots and I, I did get plastic even though I wanted to be a little more environmental but they just are too heavy I can't pick exactly. up a, a ceramic pot I mean my fig is in a, a, a terracotta pot and it, the yeah. pot is about 300 pounds uh -huh. so um but you're you repurposing you're I was gonna say so reusing. when I found some mm -hmm. I would just spray paint them black and then um I had a couple good friends that did a lot of walking during COVID uh. and even after <laughs> and they would text me that there would be pots out by the curb and I would yeah. jump in my van and uh -huh. maybe bring my son and we'd throw them well, in the van. Those will be the unwanted plastic they containers. Were, they were in the trash. They were yeah. waiting for the trash yeah, but and they I are, salvaged them. Yeah, but they are having a second life here, yep, yep, which is yep. just so purposeful. And this is something you share with me. This is the Lima Lobata mm -hmm. plant. Uh, so it is a, a annual non cote hardy vine right. and uh, it's also called the Spanish flag, flag flower yeah. they have this yellow and orange blossom quite late in the season if mm -hmm. we start from seed and over it's here. almost like a flame if oh, you think yeah. about it um, yeah it's that's quite a, that's a very good way to describe it and uh um so you find it's they work out better uh, by 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 planting them in a container so it keep them out of the way of the bunnies yeah, yeah the, i had some in the ground and the bunnies got them mm -hmm. so yeah they've done they've done very well we'll see yeah. So um, are some of the canna lilies from Phyllis? So they're not from Phyllis, uh -huh. but I learned how to do it from Phyllis. So uh -huh. uh, Phyllis was collecting the seeds uh -huh. and, and propagating. And um, so I said, OK, that sounded like a fun project. So I did the same and I had a lot of luck. And if some people have asked how you do it. And if you want to show this one is um, I Setting missed seed? this when I was dead uh -huh. heading. Uh -huh. So this is what will become the seeds here and they'll dry up and they'll get very papery on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then I would just collect them, mm -hmm. and they are almost like a—they—they're black and very, very, very hard. I think that's what people don't realize. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. The seeds. Uh -huh. um, and I grabbed them. You know, many public pots out mm -hmm. in and around town this time of year. They, the whomever is gardening them, has let them kind of go to seed. And then mm -hmm. I just grabbed them and. Wow. Um, and you have to really score them. That was what Phyllis told, told me. You have to right. really. I took a uh -huh. serrated like bread knife and <laughs> until you can see the white and then you yeah. soak them until a little bit of the root pops out and then yeah. you can start them and plant them. Yeah. And they had, uh, because the cannily, they have this larger dramatic leaf, they mm -hmm. just, they're in the right scale to use in front of the white mm -hmm. fans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the deer don't eat them. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. And then some of them, because they were all, um, you know, cross pollinated, some of them are quite lovely. Like this one has a little bit of pink in it, probably oh, yeah. from it being near a red one. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a bit of an adventure. I didn't know what I was going to get, but mm -hmm. that's part of the, for mm -hmm. me, the fun of it. Yeah. So, so, so we're looking at uh, one of the corner of your property mm -hmm. and you have the uh, trumpet vine here. Yep. Yeah. People consider them as a fragrant plant too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, you know, people have to be careful. They will, they have an incredibly strong root system. Uh -huh. They'll damage your 
uh -huh. um, the foundation of your home, but oh, I don't. Oh, there are no houses back here. We're at right. the corner of three yards, uh -huh. so I have two different ones. This one is quite to the left is yellow, and the one to the right is orange. Yeah. And then this so, is a, a night blooming datura, although it's still blooming now, even though it's not, it's in mm -hmm. the shade. Mm -hmm. Some of them are fragrant. This one is not. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that, that is another important concept. So when people talk about fragrant plant, so some of those are not reliably fragrant, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. depending on the growing condition or a particular hybrid. So exactly. you may or may not get fragrant. So I well, so when I talk about fragrant plant, I, so, I, so sometimes I point out if this is a reliably fragrant plant. Right, right. Yeah. And um, and I have the lantana, which we've discussed, is quite lemony, and I have that in a few places. Mm -hmm. um, and it yeah. is a nice one. It's got a nice sort of a lemon oil. Yeah, it's very, mm -hmm. very aromatic mm -hmm, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not a i mean it's not a floral scent from the flower but it's from the leaves, leaves yeah, yeah it's from like the, the berry yep. yeah even in the in the oils yeah and this is a little bit overgrown back here. <laughs> it's very beautiful <laughs> yeah i yeah and i and i enjoy the garden in august and uh, the the garden tour are primarily finished and we get to enjoy the garden that's important well yeah. i think you see especially <laughs> um, those of us that are fortunate enough to have large gardens mm -hmm. we can garden for for five or six months of, of exactly. you know I, my garden is vibrant uh -huh. from you know mid yeah. mid to late may until uh -huh. frost i can keep it that's true i can keep yeah. it pretty vibrant yeah. with things like the um yeah. the dahlia yeah so um, you have the flox here I do, and it's it's still blooming because um, the deer ate oh, it the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, so, so as you have, uh, in addition to the flower, you have the butterfly bush in the mm -hmm. back. Then, mm -hmm. I mean, you also have some of the bee balm. I mean, I have lots of the bee balm. The bee balm is done. Mm -hmm. And in fact, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, if you, it, it's actually getting a little bit of the... Yeah. Um, Pottery mildew. Yeah, yeah, the mildew. The, I mean, yeah. I've done, the, the, for having it, for being so wet this year, things have done yeah. well. And I learned a long time ago, the key is to keep the air moving through your plant. Exactly. So I cut things back uh -huh. a lot. This uh -huh. Baptista uh -huh. um, is giant, giant but oh, once yeah. it's done, I really cut a lot of it uh -huh. off because I find that it yeah. was just- You also have a peony here, right? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. a peony that's- Yeah, uh, some of the peony variety, they're really, really fragrant, but not all oh, of yeah, them. Oh <laughs> yeah, I didn't, yeah, these are, these uh -huh. are. I have okay. them in two spots and they are oh. beautifully fragrant. But those are a spring, those are a spring flower. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then... Um, so we are now visiting Sherry's Garden in the end of August. Right. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at the plant that would uh, provide the fragrance later in season. But there are things early mm -hmm. in season would give you fragrance. Uh, for example, the, the hyacinths would be one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I also do. the peony and the, the lilac. Yeah. Oh you, yeah, I have uh, a big lilac. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I want to point out that the bee balm, many people don't realize they're very, very fragrant. Mm -hmm. If you walk past uh, like an area, like a bed with a patch of the bee balm, it has this uh, very minty, very herbal smell. As, I, I mean, I guess that is one of the reasons that deer would leave them alone. Yeah, yeah. I think they, I, to me, they always smell like oregano. Back to that oh, pizzeria, exactly. that pizza smell. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So in the spring, yeah, I have the, I have the peony, and I have uh -huh. the lilac. I also have fragrant dianthus, which is really a beautiful, special plant. I, it's okay. gone now. It's uh -huh. done. It's a, yeah. it's an early bloomer, uh -huh. and I grew it from seed. It's really hard to find it in a nursery. I don't know why. Yeah. If it's not a very hardy plant but mm. it's quite um, probably not they don't bloom at the time when people are shopping so, yes that might be part of it and they're very lacy they're very very lacy but so you mean it's very delicate very yeah. delicate yeah uh -huh. they're like um uh -huh. almost like the frillies and yeah. then this bed has some of the flocks this is sort of a pink a hot pink bed and one of the things that's interesting is you see lots of purple flowers that are fragrant you don't see a lot of Mm -hmm. orange flowers that are fragrant. Oh, that's true, yeah, that's true. And not too many yellows either. It's interesting uh -huh. you see um, these color families, and I'm uh -huh. not sure if it's to yeah, attract I, certain pollinators. Yeah. And I think a lot of the flowers that are white tend mm -hmm. to have more fragrance. Right, uh -huh. right. And what's yeah. interesting is we're walking through, you don't see any roses because, yeah. of course, the deer. The deer, the deer will eat the yeah. new growth. Uh -huh. I've given up. I uh -huh. had many roses. I had many lilies. Same mm -hmm. thing with uh, beautiful, fragrant lilies. Yeah. There, I have none. The deer uh -huh. ate them. So this is your pink area. This, we're heading into uh -huh. my pink beds. Uh -huh. um, the black-eyed Susan's invaded. I just haven't pulled them out yet. <laughs> but they're beautiful here. And you have another pink 
uh, butterfly yep. bush from me, mm -hmm. and I remember that the variety is called Pink Delight. You keep better <laughs> records than I do. <laughs> yeah, Pink Delight. You're better about and that. What are you holding? Uh, oh your yeah. Hand? Well, I don't know if we can see if it's too dark. So, yeah. um, as you've seen, as I try and remember mm -hmm. what my plants are, I've been looking for a good way to label them. Yeah. So this is a plant tag. A, bla a plant a, tag. It's a ceramic it's that you handmade at uh, Buffalo Art Studios. At Buffalo Art Studios, where, where, I, work. where yeah. I work, where I'm the director of visual arts. Mm -hmm. And um, I made a bunch of different ones, but this was the most successful. And probably this winter I will make more. Yeah. This size um, worked well. And really what worked well about it is that it tips back. Oh yeah, so it's, so people can see it when they're walking by. Mm -hmm. This is of course not agapanthus; it's a mm -hmm. nettle. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really for me this past winter. I was just experimenting with different shapes, and yeah. this was really yeah. um, what worked well. And yeah. that idea of it tipping back a bit so uh -huh. people could see it. Yeah, and uh, uh, since they are ceramic by virtue, they can. Uh, I mean, they stay wet outside until yeah. I step on them, like this yeah. one. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which happened um, yeah. and that one what I found was that this was just too small you couldn't see it, it and yeah. you know and it uh -huh. broke and I stepped on it yeah. um, and yeah. that's you know yeah, since but, I, I yeah. made it it wasn't that yeah. disastrous. But they can stay in the garden yeah. people can still read it even if it's in two pieces. Right well, <laughs> I'll probably remake and the Dianthus ones yeah, um, yeah, yeah and then this bed beautiful. is coming to the yeah. to its end as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I want to show the viewer where, uh, what you're doing here. So this is between a few uh, spruce trees. So it's very hard to grow anything Anything. Here. Very, yes. The sun yes. and the uh, moisture situation and the roots in the ground just ho so hostile to most of the plant. Mm -hmm. But uh, the solution you found is use, using containers, Just right? these, again, um, a, a young man on our street who is a landscaper. I had mentioned to him my uh, reclaiming of pots and he said well I have these big pots when we get trees they're not very attractive I said that's all right I'll fill them up with something yeah so you use the coleus mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and the begonia the begonia they they I mean they have this uh, more uh, pronounced texture right so you can see them very well even from far far away yes and beautiful. then I love the color as the sun is setting in the evening and it's shining it's through this little spot because this is pretty shady that's the yeah. other so it's hostile because of the mm -hmm. chemistry of the pines mm -hmm. but also because of it doesn't get a very much yeah. sun between the and, three uh, big I pines. see something quite unusual here you had the garden mom in the bed but they're not yet in flower so I know they're not from this year because no. <laughs> you're not going to find garden mom not in full bloom in the garden center <laughs> right 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 so yeah so I will next month when I am getting you know, I've pulled out a number of things that'll be done and mm -hmm. I'll, I will, like everyone else in Western New York, go buy some mums to stick in, uh -huh. but I don't pull them out. I let them, you know, I let them uh, take hold and then take I'll... Take the task of the winter. Of the winter. <laughs> and then come the spring and they're somewhere where I don't actually uh -huh. want them. Uh -huh. I pull them out now and I figured I'll just over time keep throwing things in there and then whatever uh -huh. takes, takes. And yeah. that's sort yeah. of the fun of it. Let's take a look at the front okay. garden. And, you, and uh, the viewer can see uh, Shirley is on a corner lot. So it's mm -hmm. a very open area. So, so, and that, so one of the challenge we have here is with the critters, primarily mm -hmm. the deer. And the basketball. Uh, a basketball. <laughs> yeah. So I see you have an elderberry here. I so do, it's propagated uh, by my friend David. and uh, Who lives in the neighborhood. Yes. This is just beautiful. And the, the elderberry, they will usually bloom earlier in the season and but because of the, basketball. because of the basketball <laughs> so yeah you can see it's gone to berry in, in a couple sections but then these new flowers are where the basketball uh -huh. knocked off yeah. um sections of the the, yeah. the plant and my mm. my son and his friend tried to blame the deer uh, but as i uh, noted deer do not have opposable yeah. thumbs and so uh -huh. they cannot place the broken bud back on yeah. top of the plant which was and, how uh, i found it yeah that's right and that uh, elderberry it's quite fragrant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the flower has a powdery vanilla like mm -hmm. scent it's similar to the heliotrope yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then the overall plant, the berry and the leaf, they have a, like an herbal smell. It's quite distinct, but uh, but uh, it's just uh, it's a native plant, and uh, the pollinators love the flower, and mm -hmm. the birds love the berry. Yeah, so it's just a wonderful plant to add to your garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here are some more pots. Again, um, I had giant you know what people call ditch lilies here because you could see them from the street and they're very tall but after the last round with the deer 
This last mm. summer, I put. I pulled so many things out, and then again, these are big pots from the yeah. landscaper up the street, and I just filled them with different, different plants. Yeah, as you have a lot of the hellebore here. Mm -hmm. So uh, are these they are quite green? mature. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. um, they're, uh. I mean, they're, they're, these had bloomed, but these are probably five or six years old. I mean, they don't right. get this big. Yeah. It takes time for them to be. These are probably uh -huh. four, you know, four feet across. Yeah, it really um, surprised me that uh, I see your Japanese anatomy survived. The deer pressure here. I don't well, know. Yeah, the, I mean, the deer would not touch the leaf, but they love nibbling on the buds. So they eat all my buds, um, all my Japanese anatomy. So <laughs> I had no idea. I thought I had beaten them, but maybe they just were, maybe they found something more You have more, more delicious, delicious things in your garden. <laughs> yeah, they, no, they really haven't been. So, you know, they've climbed in. There's uh -huh. a few things they've gone after, but uh -huh. they haven't been terrible. Yeah. You know, as I said, I'm fighting the slugs a lot this year. Oh, that's um, true. It's, they're horrible this yeah, year. Yeah, the Probably. kale lily, I, I had to go in and divide and kind of sprinkle and pull yeah. off slugs. So we'll see. Uh -huh. You know, every year there's some... Yeah. Some new dilemma, and uh -huh. that's sort of. Yeah. I mean, every season is a little different. So, for example, for this year, the hydrangeas. So they, Fantastic. They, yeah. They do. They, uh, they're doing so well, but uh, other things like uh, the tomatoes, they're not particularly happy with this climate, with right. the weather this year. So, I want to return to the uh, spot where we started because I know you have uh, some fragrant plant here that we we didn't really have the chance to show, right? Were the phlox? Yes, the phlox and uh, uh, So and there's some there's some here. Uh-huh. And that's um And uh, you also have the fragrant uh, Oh, the fragrant gladiolus, which it's called and I have it in a number of spots. So this was a a, a year where this bloomed very late. Mm -hmm. Um so one of the things I also do is I will have pots with some of my leftover things in them, which then when they do well, I can stick them in. This had been all hollyhock. Oh, oh, and the yes. hollyhock oh. is done, uh -huh. so I cut it down. You can still see some of them, oh, yeah. and then I plop the plant uh -huh. planters on top. So these are what's called a fragrant gladiolus, or it's also uh -huh. sometimes uh -huh. called a. Um, oh, I have it here. What is it? Uh -huh. A peacock orchid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh -huh. so, um, and that's what these are. But they're not especially fragrant. And I don't. Again, I don't know. I've had. They look the same. I've gotten them from two different vendors and they just don't really have, they don't really seem to have a yeah. fragrance. Yeah, um, that's interesting. But they're very, very beautiful. So I think you give one of those, right, to me. I could have, yeah, they've yeah. done well. They've divided, they're really, uh -huh. I think, um, elegant. I like to have them where people can be almost at eye level with them. So mm -hmm. you can see here, I think, because you wouldn't see them in the back. They're not, they, oh, they're such yeah. a delicate, yeah. you know, and this is a little, if the bees really like, this is almost done. Um, uh -huh. I want to yeah. say guerra, but I'm, yeah, guerra. Yeah. Yes, I see you have the castor bean and also the sunflower yep. uh, by the pergola. So they must be close to 10, 10 12 feet tall. Oh, at least, yeah. yeah that's beautiful. Yeah. And the, on the other side, you have the lilac, which mm -hmm. you give you fragrance in May, right? Yeah, uh, yeah late May. Yeah. yeah. So usually, and then I also have here, which you don't see, but this is the peony. So, oh, yeah. yeah, this blooms. Um, I have creeping flax, which blooms, doesn't mm -hmm. really, isn't fragrant, but then, yeah. and then the lilac, uh -huh. and then the peony. Yeah. Wonderful. And yeah. then again, right up by the house so we can smell yeah. it in the evening. So the last thing I want to show in this video is the gardenia. <laughs> oh, my little gardenia here. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was so, a gift. Yeah, it's just we're so appreciative when people giving us plants. Uh, but one thing I want to say is the, oh yeah, I see you have the bud. Mm -hmm. So the gardenia in their native range, they grow like weed. They don't need anything special at all. But here in Western New York, our climate is a little too hostile to them and they like the high humidity and it's hard for us to overwinter them because even though we we have the heating inside but uh, um, we it's don't very dry yeah, it's very dry so we really struggle to uh, even try to overwinter the gardenia mm -hmm. yeah but uh, the fragrance is so unbelievably beautiful and we want to try no matter what <laughs> mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll see what we can do now that I know that it needs a lot of humidity I might try and winter it in the bathroom where, right. where the shower exactly. yeah, helps or, it out. Well, this has been a wonderful tour and so many good information. Well, thank you, Shelley, for sharing thank your you, garden Jay. with me. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Yeah, we'll keep pushing the plans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs>